I'm Cloyd, and I was in the United States Army from uh, um, October uh, 1973 to October 1976. I was in uh, combat support, and uh, um, I, as soon as I uh, got there, um, I was eight months in service. They gave me a platoon, made me a platoon sergeant, took care of them, and um, uh, you know, went TDY, teaching National Guard, and that sort of thing. When I had eight months left in the service, um, I had put all my equipment in the, um, uh, well, I had put it all in the shop. It had to be worked on. And we had a, a major that was, uh, you know, like just out of Vietnam. He was right fresh out of Vietnam. And um, I went in to give my sit rep. He physically attacked me when I told him that my equipment was in the shop. And uh, he had a, I believe in, Myself, that he had a flashback. So anyway, he attacked me, and uh, you know, like uh, was screaming how I was putting uh, the other guys in, you know, like uh, jeopardy. So when we got back in out of the field, I uh, walked in and turned my stripes in and told him that um, I told him I wasn't fit to command, and. Uh, um, from then on, well, um, my battalion command sergeant major, he came over and gave me my stripes back and just told me to, you know, like I was going to drive for the captain for my last eight months. So I went ahead and ETS. From then on, um, you know, I would get a job and I'd quit. You know, and any time they tried to give me responsibility, I would walk away. And I kept trying to prove myself, you know, that I wasn't a coward. I started drinking. Um, the problems don't go away. And drinking definitely <laughs> didn't help the problems. That uh, just complicated things. I've had, uh, you know, like instances where I thought, well, maybe if I just drive into that wall, you know, like everything is over with. I don't have to worry about it anymore. And uh, I figured that the only way to deal with it was to just deal with it head on. I had to live life on life's terms. You know, no, uh, no easy way out. It took uh, like quite a few years for this finally one doctor, he was, I, you know, and I talked to him finally and told him what had happened in the service. And he, uh, he says, well, I think you have PTSD, which was kind of, uh, you know, a relief to find out really what was wrong after all those years. And that, you know, everything in my life had, you know, like, um, you know, like followed through because of that. I joined what they call MECM, which is a mental um, intensive care case management um, program. It's a group of guys and women. We all just kind of go in. We have lunch and then uh, we have a, um, a session afterwards where we can all go in and we talk about how our day, how our week was and then we uh, discuss our problems um, with the group and they kind of give us feedback and it isn't just PTSD, it's also other mental illnesses and that sort of thing and I feel real comfortable there. It's given me um, safety and security. Learning the coping skills helps a lot and talking to the other guys, you know, and listening to what they're doing helps me out 100%. You know, because uh, um, if I had to do this completely by myself, I'd still be drunk. And uh, I wouldn't be a very good father. I've been told I'm a real good father, which, you know, I mean, she's a great kid. And uh, she wouldn't be that way if I wasn't coping with these problems in a different manner than I was before she was born. I really hope that, you know, me coming in here and talking will inspire maybe somebody else to think about what their life is like and what their experiences are, and maybe they can relate to something I've said enough that they will go and talk to a counselor. And I just, I just hope I've said something that someone, you know, really needed to hear.